Well everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S22 and see how this specific phone holds up in 2023. Now, this is still a very good phone. I think everyone kind of knows this. You know, it's a very solid device that came out last year. I liked it. I still think it holds up very, very well. But we are very close to the next generation of this phone coming out. In fact, you might already see it out depending on when you watch this video. If you're watching the video a couple weeks or a month after, Clearly the I, you know, Samsung Galaxy S22 is already going to be out at that point. So if you want to pick up the Samsung Galaxy S22 or any Samsung Galaxy for the most part, I will leave some links in the description. You can get them phone you can get those phones from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, when the Samsung Galaxy S22 came out last year, I was honestly a very, very big fan of it. Mostly because Samsung kind of went away from one of the things that I didn't really like what they did last year. And that specific thing, you know, truly was the, you know, plastic back. I think plastic bags are okay, and I definitely do think they've gotten better throughout time, but the, that was the big thing that kind of threw me off, and I really wish Samsung didn't do that, but they did, and they went past it now, so it's totally understandable, but if we take a look at the front, this specific phone still has a 6.1 inch dynamic AMOLED display. It's a 1080p panel, and it is a very good looking panel. At the end of the day, when you have a phone like this, it's still gonna last for a very long time. It's a flat display, so it's not curved. Some people actually prefer that. And it's a whole bunch of display, fingerprint sensor in the display as well. It's a very good looking screen. I mean, no matter which way you look at it, very, very solid for sure. Now on the bottom of this phone, you do have your USB-C port which doubles with Samsung DeX, which is really cool. And actually, this last year, I've probably been using Samsung DeX more than maybe any other year before. You know, I've been using it by plugging it into my specific, you know, monitor, and it's been working out fairly well. Now, I'm not doing anything crazy. I tried testing some games, and every once in a while, I do a little bit of gaming from my phone up to my monitor, but I don't really do that too much because the same emulators I used to use on my Android phone are not supported on my Mac. So there's not really a point of doing that anymore. But at that time, it was actually really fast seeing some updates to those pieces of software and it was actually really crazy. Now on the back of this phone you do have, as I mentioned before, a frosted glass back. So this was my favorite thing that Samsung brought back and I hope they end up keeping it for the next phones. But with this specific phone, what the problem was earlier on was that they just dropped too many things at one time with the Galaxy S20. They dropped the micro SD card and the plant and they added the plastic back at the same time. It's like you can only do one at a time. I feel like personally, they did that with the Galaxy Note 5, they did it with the Galaxy S6, and personally, I don't think that those phones have a great reputation. With the Galaxy S22, I think Samsung did a great job here. I think this phone physically, you know, it feels very good. It doesn't feel like that kind of cheaper phone or weirder phone compared to the Galaxy S21. And you kind of have to differentiate the S21 FE and the, you know, standard upper, you know, lines. If all those phones have plastic bags, the FE is going to be almost the same thing as the standard line. And that's why I don't really like, you know, that the approach Samsung did previously. But I think it looks and performs fairly good right now. So triple camera setup on the back, wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, IP certification, you have pretty much everything you'd ever need on a phone like this. And that is the thing that I love about this device. For the last year I've been using it, it's been fairly solid. And I would argue that this is probably one of the most used Androids I use right now. Maybe the Pixel 6 Pro, maybe it would be up there too. Now the Pixel 7 a little bit more, but this Galaxy S22, I really like Samsung's and these are very solid devices for sure. Now moving on to the camera side of things, this phone, like I mentioned before, has that triple camera setup on the back. So it has a 50 megapixel wide angle lens, 10 megapixel telephoto lens, 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and on the front, it has a 10 megapixel wide angle lens. Now, personally, in my opinion, I truly do think that the Samsung Galaxy S22's camera was very, very good, and it still is a very solid camera as well. It's not perfect, but it really does get the job done, and I do think that in this day and age, the photo and the video quality from this thing is very, very good. So you could do 8K video on the back, which if we pause right there, a lot of manufacturers are still not up to that speed. A lot of manufacturers cannot or are not doing 8K, Google Pixel, iPhones, maybe some other you know, manufacturers too. Samsung's only one is doing it and they've been doing it for years now which is beautiful on the other side with the front camera you do have 4k at 60 on that specific camera too on the front which is nice now you have a bunch of features built in and i would argue you have more features built into this camera than the iphone and the google pixel as well so that's kind of an advantage when you're getting a phone like this that might be another thing to keep in mind so 
I will definitely say the Galaxy S22's camera is very good. The only situation, again, is that even if you go use applications like Snapchat and TikTok and Instagram, although Samsung did say they teamed up with those manufacturers to increase camera quality, I still don't see it. I still didn't see that big of an improvement when I first got it, but I still think it's a very good camera for sure. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. Now in the software and the longevity portion of this phone, this device is going to be lasting for a very long amount of time for an Android phone. And even for a standard phone in general, you know, it still has a long lifespan ahead of it. It's not going to be discontinued anytime soon. I would probably argue that this thing is going to be lasting. So it's on One UI 5 right now. It came out One UI 4. I would probably say One UI 7 or One UI 8 is probably when this thing is going to get discontinued. And it may even last longer if Samsung wants to improve their longevity of software there too. So I think that's another big advantage that this phone is going for it is that even if you get this phone today, and even if there is some issue where there's some stuff going on, you will still have a very long supported phone here which is really cool and because this thing has one ui there are so many features inside of this device it is crazy one ui has just kind of spilled over a bunch of things and that's one thing i really do like about one ui they put a bunch of features within their software and that is one reason why i really do like their phones for sure so although one ui you know i've kind of grown into it it's definitely gotten better throughout time now, in terms of the performance side of things, this device does have that Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset inside with 8 gigabytes of RAM. Now, personally for me, I feel like the amount of RAM this thing has okay for this type of phone. It's not supposed to be like the top tier number one performing phone of all time, so that's totally understandable. But with this type of phone, that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset at that moment was actually very good, and even right now, it's still a very good performing chipset. Really, everything I've done with this phone so far has been solid. And when I do light apps and anything like that, it's been perfectly fine. Intensive apps has been great. Emulators I've tested on this thing have been, you know, amazing. And certain applications and software are pretty much benchmarked against this chipset. And now that we're getting the S23 with a way better chipset probably, you know, it's going to be benchmarked against that device. I've done a bunch of comparisons against this phone and all of its predecessors for the most part, all the competitors like the iPhones and the Pixels. And this phone, although, you know, it's still a very good performing phone, I like the fact that this phone has, you know, a lot of applications that are optimized for this chipset. Compared to the Google Tensor chipset, it seems like the games and the emulators that I use aren't really optimized as well for the Tensor chipset right now, but Snapdragon has been there for a long time, so a lot of these apps are optimized for that, which is really nice. So I would say from the performance side, I definitely do like the Galaxy S22's performance, but this does bring me to the one area that I'm not really too big of a fan of with the Galaxy S22, uh, S22 and that's actually with the battery life. So this thing has a 3700 million power battery inside of it, and you know, I definitely do think, you know, it's not a small size battery, but no matter what I do on my Samsung, it's always the first one to die in my battery test. No matter what I do, it's not even that intense of a battery test at all, but every single one I've done in way different conditions, every single like season I've done, you know, different battery tests. And for some reason, you know, this phone doesn't like, you know, outperforming any other device. I think it's always the first one to die compared to my Pixels and my iPhones. So that is something I'm hoping the next generation of Samsung devices kind of fixes and addresses, but that is really my only complaint here. Beyond that, I think the Samsung Galaxy S22 is still a very good performing phone. This is a very solid device, it has a lot of power inside of it. It may not be perfect, but I think Samsung did a great job, and when I look at the future of this device, it kind of gets a thumbs up for me for sure. So, in terms of that, I love this phone, and hopefully, you know, long live the Galaxy S22. That's kind of the best way I can put it. So, if you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, not me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.